So you've already got solar panels, a battery, and maybe also an electric vehicle. The question now is, what's the best energy tariff to be on to complement everything you've got? One of the energy providers here in the UK, Octopus Energy, has just released a new tariff called Octopus Flux, especially for those with solar and battery installations. And even if you don't live in the UK, I think this new tariff could be the basis for many smart energy tariffs going forward, no matter where you are in the world. Let me show you why. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel Gary Does Solar and the first part of a new series on smart energy tariffs. Whether you're financially or environmentally motivated to get solar, choosing the right energy tariff for your installation is almost as important a decision as choosing the equipment itself. And this is because of the bigger picture that emerges when you look at energy for your country as a whole and some of the challenges around that. Here is a typical energy demand for a country. This one is based on the UK showing the number of gigawatts of power required from midnight one day to midnight the next. This is sometimes described as the duck curve, apparently because it looks like a duck. Well, I can't see it myself, but there you go. What's important about this curve is that during the night, electricity use is far lower than during the day, when we're all awake. During the night, most of that demand can be met with nuclear and renewables, but sometimes renewables generate too much supply, and so wind turbines have to be stopped, etc. And then in the afternoon and evening, there's a different problem. You can see a steady rise in demand peaking at between around 5 and 7 p.m. To ensure there is sufficient supply to meet that demand, fossil fuel generator plants, including gas and coal, are normally spun up. But this is costly, and those costs are reflected in the price you pay per kilowatt hour. Ideally then, a country wants to flatten this duck curve, which would make the management of electricity supply and demand a whole lot easier, less expensive and cleaner. But how to do this? Most people today are on a tariff that charges a fixed price per kilowatt hour, no matter what time of day you use energy. The energy provider has traditionally used a meter like this one in your home to count the number of kilowatt hours you're consuming over the days, months and years. All very straightforward. By the way, if you get confused about kilowatts and kilowatt hours, feel free to watch my video here on the difference between the two. The link is in the description. In an attempt then to flatten the dirt curve and get consumers to start using more electricity during the night, a new kind of energy tariff was introduced into the UK in the late 1970s, called Economy 7. This tariff provides consumers with seven hours of cheaper electricity during the night, and that cheaper electricity could be used, for example, to prime storage heaters, ready for them to heat homes the next day. The remainder of the day was typically billed at a slightly higher rate than normal. Now, in order to build customers using this tariff correctly, a special type of meter was required, which kept count of the number of kilowatt hours used during the on and off peak periods. The idea of this tariff on the daily duck curve was to increase demand during the off peak period. And this would also have a knock on effect with the peak period, reducing it as consumers shifted some of their load to off peak. This tariff still exists today, although the old analog meters are gradually being replaced with digital smart meters like this one. What's revolutionary about these newer types of meter is that they can keep count of the number of kilowatt hours used every half hour of the day, and then periodically upload this data to a central database. In the UK, over 25 million homes are fitted with smart meters today, and if you want to find out more about how the smart meter network works, I've placed a link to this website in the video description. One energy supplier that's pushing hard for a sustainable future based on renewables, including solar and wind, is Octopus Energy. They operate in an ever-increasing number of countries around the world. Perhaps your country is already listed here. The innovative electricity tariffs offered by this company are only possible because of the time of use capabilities that smart meters provide. Let's start by looking at one of Octopus Energy's early tariffs called Octopus Go. This tariff was designed specifically for customers with EVs, encouraging them to charge their vehicles overnight instead of during the day. The tariff comprises an attractively priced 4-hour off-peak period between half past midnight and 4.30 a.m. and a slightly higher than normal pricing outside of that. Here is the actual pricing of that tariff if you live near Oxford in the UK. It's 12 pence during the off-peak period and 41.64 pence outside of that. Now that's quite a high normal rate, but it didn't take long for customers to realise that if you had solar and battery in addition to an EV, the tariff could actually save you a lot of money. This was because as well as charging your EV during the off-peak period, you could also fully charge your battery at the same time and use that to power your home for most, if not all, of the rest of the day. 
Even better, although this tariff is purely import, you can pair it with Octopus's basic export tariff called SEG, which pays 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour for any excess solar generated. So all this is great for the customer, but what's in it for Octopus Energy? For that, we need to go back to the bigger picture again. Here is the example national demand curve from earlier. Now, if everyone in your country transitioned from gasoline-powered cars to electric over the next few years and simply charged them from when they got home from work, this would dramatically increase the level of demand in the evening. And we know this would mean a lot more fossil fuel being burned, which is costly and kind of defeats the reason to go electric with vehicles in the first place. However, if those vehicles are charged overnight, then this not only solves the demand problem in the evening, but helps utilise the national grid better during the night, flattening the duck curve. Octopus Go is becoming increasingly popular with customers, along with another EV tariff they launched called Intelligent Octopus, and this gives customers up to six hours of cheap, green energy to charge their EVs every night. I'll be covering these and other smart tariffs in greater detail in the next part of this series, but the problem is that these two particular tariffs are only available for customers with EVs. So if you have a solar and battery installation but no EV, what can you do? Well, you could consider using Octopus Energy's Economy 7 tariff called Eco7. But now there's a brand new tariff available, launched in the UK last week, specifically designed for those with solar and battery. It's called Octopus Flux, and I'll take you through it just now. The first thing to note that this tariff comprises both an import and an export rate. Looking at the import rate in blue first, it looks similar to Octopus Go in that it has an off-peak period, but you'll see that this period from 2am to 5am is only 3 hours, instead of the 4 hours that Octopus Go provides. The reason for this may be that 3 hours is considered sufficient to fully charge a typical battery, provided that the charge rate of the battery is at least a third of the capacity of course. To give a couple of examples, a Tesla Powerwall 2 has a capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours and a charge rate of 5 kilowatts. And a Give Energy 9.5 kilowatt hour battery, my own installation includes two of these, has a charge rate of 3.6 kilowatts. In addition to the off peak period, there is a peak period from 4 pm to 7 pm. And unlike the export rate for Octopus Go, the export rates for Octopus Flux vary throughout the day, determined by the same off peak and peak periods. Let's put some numbers on this, again using the Oxford area as an example. Looking at the import pricing first, the standard rate is 33.73 pence, but this is lowered to 20.24 pence during the off-peak period. It is, however, a whopping 47.22 pence during the peak period. Then looking at the export pricing, the standard export rate is 23.86 pence, which is unheard of in the UK, 70% of the typical import rate. This rate reduces to 9.7 pence during the off-peak period, but increases to an incredibly high 38.03 pence during the three-hour peak period. We'll talk about how those with solar and battery can maximise the benefits of this tariff, but first we should look again at why Octopus would offer it. And of course, it all comes back to the infamous duck curve. If we look at the very top of the peak demand in this curve, we know that this is met today by marginal generation, in other words, burning fossil fuels. If we could chop this off even by a few percentage points, this would have a real impact on reducing the amount of fossil fuels burned. The Octopus Flux Tariff aims to dissuade people from drawing energy from the grid during that time, instead using energy from a battery, which can be charged during the off-peak period. This has the effect of helping to flatten the curve to some degree, depending on the uptake of the tariff and other tariffs like it over time. OK, so if you've got solar and battery, how can you make best use of this kind of tariff? Well, looking at the profile again, there is of course the opportunity for you to charge your battery during the off-peak period, benefiting from the lower import rate. Then, there is the opportunity to export energy at an attractive rate during the normal and especially the peak export periods. And you can do this from your charged battery and also excess solar generation throughout the day. And during the summer, there will still be sunshine at least part of the peak period, which will help a lot. The most important thing, of course, is to try and minimise the amount you import from the grid during the peak period, given the high cost per kilowatt hour then. And this is especially more difficult on days that are not sunny. But on those days, because the off-peak rate is the same length as the peak rate, it should be possible to avoid importing during the peak period if you can charge during the off-peak period and retain that charge until the start of the peak period. You'll of course need to ensure that you don't draw more than the discharge rate of your battery, otherwise you'll still be pulling from the grid at the peak rate. 
In order to model the effect of the Octopus Flux tariff with various solar and battery configurations, I created this handy utility, which I'll show you in a moment. But first, here is a resulting example profile on a sunny summer's day using that utility. This profile happens to be my own installation, comprising a 7 kW peak array, a 5 kW hybrid inverter, and two 9.5 kW hour batteries with a total charge and discharge rate of 3.6 kW. I deliberately assumed no draw from the grid from home appliances for this profile so you can easily see the effects of the tariff itself. Starting from the left, during the off-peak period, the three hours is enough to half fill the batteries. Then, over the next three hours, not much happens until the sun provides sufficient energy to continue charging the batteries. And here, the sun continues to charge the batteries until they are full, but you can see there is also enough excess solar now to allow some export at the normal rate. During this period, the batteries are now full, and so all the solar generation is exported at the normal export rate. And at this point, we've entered the peak period, and here we're able to start forced discharging the batteries in order to export that energy if we want. And because there is still solar generation at this time, we can export that as well all at the peak export rate. And finally here, we continue discharging the batteries and exporting that energy until they are empty. In reality though, we would likely stop force discharging at the end of the peak period, and instead self-consume any remaining battery charge into the evening. Here is the utility itself. It looks a bit complex, but it's actually just an extension of the utility I created in this video a few months ago. Check the link in the description if you're interested to see a detailed explanation on how the utility was constructed from a blank sheet. I'll take you through this new version now so that you can get an idea of how it works. The tariff rates have already been entered on the right, so all you have to do is enter the details about your battery in column C. For example, here we have a Tesla Powerwall 2, and then enter your typical daily consumption in column F. Once that's done, you can model different scenarios to see what your savings or even profit might be. There are also a couple of graphs on the bottom left to show the battery charge state and the export rate during the day. You can see the effect of different battery types and sizes as I change them. With my battery, I should be able to not only save money, but actually make money, perhaps as much as four or five pounds a day. Now the utility needs a bit more testing yet before I release it, but I'll put a link in the description when it's ready. And to be honest, if I get time, I'll likely recreate the utility using code instead. You know it's time to code things instead of using a spreadsheet when you end up having to deal with formula like this. It can be hard to compare tariffs in order to choose the best one for your circumstances, but here's a chart showing a comparison between the import rates for the three tariffs that we've talked about in this video. Despite the very low off-peak rate for Eco7, the normal rate is the same as the peak rate of flux. The off-peak rate for Go is only slightly higher, and you only get 4 hours instead of 7, but the normal rate is more bearable. If you have an EV, then out of these three tariffs, Go is probably looking the best. And if you don't have an EV, the 3 hours of off-peak time that Flux gives you to charge your battery is probably sufficient, indeed if you need to do that at all during the summer. Octopus Energy has a few other smart tariffs as well, which track the market price, and I'll be covering these in the next part of this series. I wish all energy providers were as forward-thinking as Octopus Energy, trying to bring us closer to a clean energy future, but sadly they're not. If Octopus is present in your country, they're certainly worth checking out. And if you're in the UK and interested in signing up, please use my referral code and you'll get £50 credited to your account. I'll also get £50 and this will help me to continue making more videos for you. And please could you hit the like button if you're getting something out of this video, that way YouTube will promote it to others. And if you subscribe to my channel, you'll see all my new videos as soon as I release them. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you very soon.